Sean Carney uh, is with us. He is the president and CEO of 40 Days for Life. He is depicted in the movie Unplanned uh, as a really nice guy. Uh, <laughs> and as he walks in, I'm like, yep, that's the guy from the movie. Uh, Sean, uh, welcome to the program. How are you? Good, good to be on. Thanks okay, for having me. Okay, so you are the one, or your organization is the one, uh, that turned Abby Johnson uh, and she was running a Planned Parenthood. She had had abortions herself, but she had an experience. How long into your knowing her did she have this experience? Eight years. Eight years. Which really helped. Uh, otherwise, I, I would have been tempted not to believe her. But I, I knew her for eight years. My wife and I uh, volunteered on the other side of the fence for the local pro-life organization. And she volunteered for Planned Parenthood, and then Abby and I became directors of opposing organizations at the same time. And so we always said, you know, of course, we're there for for the babies and and for the women to give them other medical alternatives, but we're also there for the workers. And Mm -hmm. Abby had the humility to take us up on it. Um, it, What I really like about this movie, and it opens next week called Unplanned, is that it shows so it's the first time I've seen this handled right. The way you handled the people who were screaming murderers and they were showing the bloody pictures, there's no one going to be attracted to that. Right. Uh, It just scares and freaks out the women who are going in for an abortion. You guys separated yourself from that and you took a very different approach. Yeah, it freaks me out too. (laughs) <laughs> because, yeah. you know, that's not an approach that that is effective. Some of those people may have good intentions, but we were not that. Uh, 40 Days for Life is is peaceful. It's, it's law abiding. Our folks sign a statement of peace. And that's why so many come over and, and choose life, you know, at the last moment. But it's also why we've helped 186 abortion facility workers leave. Abby was the wow. 26th uh, worker that we helped. She was just our worker, where the campaign started in College Station, Texas. So I knew her well. She's the she's one of three Planned Parenthood managers uh, who we've helped leave. She had a traumatic experience uh, where she actually had to hold the ultrasound, uh, and so she watched this baby fight for its life as it was as it was killed, uh, and that's what changed her. When she came to the fence. Uh, or she didn't come to the fence. She came, at least in the movie, she came to your office. In my office, which happened. Really? So tell me about that day. It was October 5th of 2009, and uh, somebody walked in and said, Abby Johnson is here, which is the opening of the trailer, the movie trailer. That really happened, and I walked in, and she was distraught. I'll never forget, Glenn, seeing her Planned Parenthood security card drenched in her mascara and her makeup from her tears. I'd seen her swipe that card, you know, hundreds of times. But that's when I knew uh, Abby's changed. I've known this woman for eight years and she's changed. And I said, it looks like you've had a rough day at the office. And she kind of laughed and said, you could say that. And she told me what she witnessed, which was a 13 week old baby boy, as you said, fight for his life with no chance and, and lose it in front of her eyes. She, she's interesting because as the movie depicts, they, Planned Parenthood took her right to the top fast. They yeah. usually, they kind of ease you into it, but they took her right in and really kind of tested her, pushed her, but, you know, by showing her the little feet and everything else that they have to, they have to kind of piece the body back together to make sure there's nothing left in the mom. It, and and it, she didn't have a problem with that. She didn't. And. I can't explain that. She can't explain that. No one could explain that. Most people would run out screaming, saying, right. I'm out of here. And they do a good job in the movie of showing Abby's change over time. Mm-hmm. She starts lying. She starts manipulating. She, you know, they, they really show that. And then her, her change of heart. It doesn't surprise me that she really climbed the ladder because there's a big disconnect between corporate Planned Parenthood in America and the people that actually run their abortion facilities where they operate. What does that mean? It means that they are often left out to dry. This isn't the most talented group of people that are managing. You know, there's almost 700 Planned Parenthood locations across the country. And when we have a peaceful 40 Days for Life campaign, uh, they, they get no support uh, from corporate. And 
it's extremely effective for us because we can work with local pregnancy centers and, and get women other options, other medical options, and they're just not supported in the grassroots. They're very top heavy. So when they get what I would call Abby as a star, you know, she was an, an employee of the year in her mid twenties, they, they shoot her up to the top. And what they definitely underestimated about her was that she was young enough to still have a conscience and not be hardened to this. And she actually believed she was doing the right thing for women. I think many of them do. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. You can't, you can't, there couldn't be that number of monsters. No, you know not, what I mean? not at all. And, and, you know, they, I think they show that, that she did feel that she was trying to help women and they all feel that, you know, we've otherwise they probably wouldn't do it. And that's one of the reasons, you know, we've helped 186 workers leave. How do you what do you attribute that to? How, how do you how does that happen? They approach us. They, we don't go out lurking for workers and you got to get out. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they have to approach us. That is our policy. And when they approach us and they say, I, I, I just can't do this anymore. Um, my conscience has, has gotten to me. Uh, that's usually what they say. We had one abortion doctor say, I think I need to see a priest. Um, it's not people that are mad or disgruntled and quit. And th that happens too. They're like, ah, these crazy yeah, people. Yeah, but those aren't the people coming to you. No, not at all. Uh, these are people that actually have a change of heart. And, you know, <laughs> Glenn, the, the conversion gate on the abortion issue only swings in one direction. Mm -hmm. There's not some mom with five kids and 10 grandkids that's run a, a pregnancy help center her whole life who all of a sudden wakes up and is 60 and decides, I should have been running an abortion facility my whole life. <laughs> and now I need a, a, an agent and a speaking tour. You know, right. I mean, believe me, we would hear them. Right. They would be on the news every right. single day. So, it, you know, there's an exodus out of the abortion industry. And there are so many good people that at one point supported reproductive rights who don't. And there are so many women in the pro-life movement uh, you know, is, is often led by those who have had an abortion, mm -hmm. you know, men who have paid for an abortion, uh, workers like Abby who have done an abortion. And that certainly convicted me as a young man when I heard women who have, who have had an abortion share their testimony. I thought, what am I doing? You I, know, I'm 19. Perhaps most famously, you know, the woman from Roe versus Wade. Right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. why not being a pro-life activist? So that was the biggest, biggest mistake of her life. Yeah. Right. And Bernard Nathanson, who's the founder of NARAL was the first abortion doctor to have a change of heart. Wow. And he witnessed an abortion that he did, very similar, uh, but, but much earlier than, than Abby's experience where he actually saw the abortion he was doing. You're, in the movie, your organization, I mean, you guys are out there at this clinic seemingly all the time. Like, what is the reality of how often and how long you guys are out there? So at that location, we were out there year round. Wow. And then when every we- day. Every day. Every, every day. Every day. That's incredible. Wow. And when we launched 40 Days for Life as a, as a nationally coordinated effort that's in the movie in the fall of 2007, um, you know, that was sort of ground zero. And we were hoping it would go to 20 or 25 cities. And, and it ended up going to 816 in 56 mm. different countries. And- you know, it, it's a beautiful thing because uh, obviously we do this. It, it, it's out of love of God, but it's love of country as well. There are men and women who have died so that we have our freedom of speech. Uh, my grandfather was in the Pacific in World War II. And shame on us, liberal or conservative, if we don't use our freedom of speech. And it's a very patriotic thing to do it, as well as obviously a faith-based thing. And I think it takes on another dimension of patriotism. I think this is our last call. Now that they have now that they have exposed themselves that they don't mean rare. They right. don't mean safe, rare. They don't mean any of that. They mean I have a right to kill anything that I want even after birth. Uh now we're talking infanticide and I think I think this is the line in the sand that if America doesn't meet this and reject it and and turn back to God and say, okay, we're not on that side. We're on the side of life, not of death. We, you are our guide. Um, I, I think I think all the protection comes away from this country. It does. You, you're exactly right. It shakes us to our core. Who are we? Where did we come from? Where are we going? Mm -hmm. And if we, Glenn, this isn't the the pro-abortion nuts on the street who come up from their parents' basement no, to know. yell at pro-life people. It's not the fringe. These are senators, governors, people that, you know, sound nice and are mm -hmm. supposedly well-educated 
saying we will leave a baby girl on a table left to die. It, it is uncharted waters in the United States of America. And I know for us, it has been a huge wake-up call. We, we have just had a swarm of new volunteers. Uh, it's perfect timing for the movie to come out on March 29th. And it's a wake-up call. If, if this isn't a wake-up call, then, then wake up calls don't exist. Oh, that's why I say it's the last. Mm-hmm. This is the last call. I really think. Um, tell me quickly, you're uh, you're starting a forty day. We're in the middle life. of life. Okay, tell me about it. Yes, yeah, so forty days for life is going on right now in uh, three hundred and seventy seven cities around the world. If you go to forty daysforlife dot com, uh, you can participate. Thirty percent of our local campaigns are run by women who have had an abortion. It's my mm-hmm. favorite stat, and so. Most of the folks, you have a little fear the first time going out. Don't worry. Sign up. We'll take you through it. We've never had an incident. You, you, you will never regret going and praying at a 40 Days for Life vigil. It is so fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Um, unplanned. So, you know, I, I've seen the movie. Uh, it's received a rating of R, which makes absolutely no sense, uh, especially if you don't believe that that's the life of a child. The scene that is objectionable lasts about 30 seconds on film, will re- will remain with you for the rest of your life. And it is a CGI of a baby fighting for its life on an ultrasound. So it's a bad, scratchy, black and white image just like an ultrasound, but you see the baby actually fight for its life as it actually did when it changed Abby Johnson's heart. And they don't want your children to be able to see this movie, um, yet they will fight hard for your children to be able to go and have an abortion without your permission. They don't want you to have your children see this without you sitting next to them. I highly recommend that you take your kids uh, to this movie uh, and uh, and you do sit next to them. In fact, my faith does not like rated R movies and, and says you should stay away from rated R movies. I so highly recommend this, and I highly recommend it for your children to come with you, and I do not mean small children, uh, but 13 years old. Um, bring your children uh, with you. They need to understand this movie is game-changing, I am going to be flying out. Uh, I'm volunteering my time to fly out to Salt Lake City to do um, uh, a, a, a premiere of this on the night that it premieres and opens up nationwide. Uh, I'll give you all of the details of which theater or theaters it's going to be at. Uh, and that will be next Friday. I will be there live and I will welcome you, talk about the movie, we'll do question and answer afterwards. But please, please take your family to see this movie. It is one of the most important uh, movies, I think, in my lifetime. Halfway through it, I thought, I may see the end of abortion in my lifetime. In the next 10 years, I could see the end of abortion. This is the time.